Good. <laughs> that was good on uh Yeah. So Saturday night, we were playing the talk, shout out to the talk guys. Um we are here in Swirlies in Orlando. Yeah. Swirlery. Swirlery. Yeah. Uh run by Melissa, you may see in the background there behind the bars, so wine bar. Uh, apparently it's the wine bar that drum and bass built. That's right. Here in Orlando. I am here with one of the America's sort of forefathers, one of the, the, the pioneers of the, the modern jungle scene here in America, Mr. AK-1200, someone that I've been very familiar with from the UK for 15 years, maybe more. Um, we know, we sort of like, it was, it was sort of you and Diesel Boy were sort of becoming like the two guys from the States that we in Europe certainly Right, sort of, right. sort of pay, heard about and paid attention to, and you know, yeah. and then for me, DJ Dara as well, coming from Ireland originally, but then going right. across, and then Brett Clever, yep. there's a few others like that. But you know, and then got a shout out Heath Looney, uh, yeah. Communications, and Gamma Ray, and a few others. But you were definitely one of the pioneers of the American jungle scene. Like, how did you get involved in jungle? How did that start? Um, I mean, the thing is, I, I See, I had a record store in 1991. Mm. And Whereabouts? In, uh, it was here in Orlando. Yeah. Uh, and it it was um, it was called the Hottie Shop. Yeah. <laughs> the Hottie Shop. Hottie Shop. Because we used to call tunes hotties. Like, right. oh, that's a hottie to, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So and it was it was with two P's and an E for shop. Right. You know. Um, yeah. And I would get, I mean, tunes, tunes, and all of a sudden, the certain records would come and they'd have sped up break beats and hip hop samples and you know chipmunk vocals and, yeah. and rave sounds and and it was what became jungle techno yeah. and hardcore break beat and, yeah. um, you know so I started basically I, all the promos that would come in through through my ordering each week I would call the numbers on there which back then when, you know people don't know this they don't they haven't like in the early 90s when you called England you were paying to call England like yeah, it, wasn't, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like any calling online yeah, and doing, yeah, yeah. Was like know, yeah. I mean I, I remember my dad going off on me for like a $600 phone bill um, but it, it was it was the way that honestly it was the way that I got through to yeah. all these people and you know I started building connections the first people I talked to were like you know, moving shadow and sub bass, and, yeah. and I, you know, getting to know like Danny Brakes and Rob Playford and, and Simon Colebrook, and um, you know, a lot of the people like Certificate 18 and and some of the um, early like main source Vickis and 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 just you know, all these old school like distributors and, mm. and labels. Um, I just started getting tunes, yeah. and as I was getting tunes, I was also. Um, doing reviews mm. for um, Mix Mag Update yeah. in the UK yeah. um, and you know I'm an American writer reviewing English music for an yeah. English publication yeah. sort of significant and, yeah. um, and then I started writing here for uh, we started a magazine I started contributing to a newsletter called US Rave right, okay. um, and then beyond that we started Jungleized um, Jungleized right, yeah, okay, that yeah. was like a 95 96 sort of thing it was a magazine yeah yeah, yeah so, okay yeah, yeah. yeah and it was it was jeffy started it and i uh co-published it with them like basically put it together with them and did because i was I, then i started traveling to the yeah. uk yeah and i would stay you know six eight twelve weeks at a time who would you was there anyone i'd know you stay with or i would stay at i would stay at rob playford's house oh, dan okay. donnelly's house simon colbrook's house uh, Danny Brake's house, their yeah. mom's house, you right, know right, 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 and um, you know, just just living it, and yeah. then going out, and you know, going out to these these venues like Sanctuary and yeah. the Keens and yeah. seeing Rat Pack, and yeah. you know, or or when I remember it was like 1995, I did a uh, <coughs> a, a cover story for um, 
it, it was it was something with V. It was like a V launch. Yeah. That, it was a big, huge V party, and and I covered that like and and you know I, I think that was one of my first paying uh, gigs for writing and stuff. It was like ten cents a word, uh, write five thousand words or wow, okay. something. You know, just a little. And um, so through like direct contact is it, it, I, I got face to face with people and, yeah. and you know just way back then when you're an American. I mean, imagine like making a tune yeah. in your in your in your bedroom and having, you know, or, or saving up enough to go to a studio and work with somebody who has the equipment or a computer because a lot of people didn't have mm -hmm. anything. Most it was most of the labels had their one main engineer. Yeah. And, you know, um, you'd go into that that place, you'd make a tune, and then all of a sudden, you know, somebody from America calls you and goes, "Oh, I'm so into your stuff," you yeah. know. Then you sort of, you know. To be the first person to do that gave me a lot of benefits that, yeah. um, I, you know, I would say right place, right time. And, and the fact that I answered every time opportunity knocked yeah. as much as I could. Yeah. Um, but that gave me an early discipline yeah. with learning the music. And I think completely this is a music that was born and bred from the streets of London. Yeah, I and, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for someone like me who was born and raised in Florida, yeah, you see what Florida is like. Yeah, and, 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 you <laughs> okay. know what I mean. It's it's theme it's parks energy. and it's yeah. and it's you know it's it's just massive lawns. <laughs> yeah, and, and retirees and yeah. you, it's hard to write dark music in a sunny place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. So to understand that way, and you know, and I feel like I've spent my life since learning about more musical culture through English music that I, I tried to lean against the stereotype that Americans had early yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and it was a fight. It was, it was a battle to be accepted yeah. um, by a lot of people. Um, mm. You know, it, and it, you know, it, at first it was a novelty, then it became an annoyance. Like, yeah. well, it's just another American trying to get on the end of something. And, yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm probably going a, a little far. No, 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 this is great. <laughs> this is exactly what, this is what um, I wanted to know. Because, like, hearing about how it started to seep its way through into American culture, that's always been a very fascinating journey for me. Because different people have said different things. I mean, you know, one name that's always come up, and I, and I mentioned this to you the other night, is Aphrodite, though. Mm. Is like, in terms of over here and seeing a British DJ arrive in this country and play out, he seems to be quite fundamentally important for a the, lot of Americans. And it's this is exactly why. It's the, the music that he made yeah. was so accessible and so relatable at that yes. time. The, the, the way that... In the 95, 90, well, first of all, let's go back to Urban Shakedown. Yes. Now, and even before that, where, where Mickey Finn was doing yeah. stuff with, with Darren J. And, yeah. and, you know, but Urban Shakedown came out, a big Orlando hit was, yeah. was Some Justice. You so, know? Some Justice is a great tune. Yeah. Brilliant tune, yeah. And um, just following it from there, as those beats got faster, that bass line and that sort of approachability for... And I dare say, a female comfort like yeah. that's the that's the thing. And I know that times are changing, and we're supposed to be uh, sensitive toward what we can say and what we can't say. But the truth is, music that appeals to women gets the longer duration right. every time. Okay, because yeah. you're alienating half of your audience Ooh. when you don't cater to them. Now, if you do cater to them. You're gonna get the guys to come right along. Yeah, yeah <laughs> they'll just, come along. Yeah, it's we're we're a dumb breed, and we yeah. do that. Yeah, we yeah, follow yeah. what yeah. you know, what, what our hearts and our our Bits. instincts. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was what what Aphrodite and Darren the bass Jay lines and, things, yeah. and the, the the female vocals and the the big hooks yeah. and the the sort of catchiness of it all. It does seem it does seem quite crazy because he was. You know, and he used a lot of hip hop samples, and I think that's yeah. what was quite appealing. I mean, you know, Esteban and many others um, from the American scene have all told me, even Will Miles and Sinistar, and those people have all said it, yeah. that their first sort of like 
here in jungle was from Aphrodite. So Aphrodite, big up yourself, mate, because yeah. I'm going to have to try and see if I can get to talk to him one day because I'd be, I'd be really interested to, to sure. hear about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd be really sure. interested to hear about that. And, and he's got some tales for sure. Like, like, and again, I was the first person to, to reach out to him. He'll tell you that. Right, right, well, yeah. But that was before I had my record store. That was because the numbers were written on some justice. Yes. And so I not only did I talk to him, I talked to Mickey and I talked to... Yeah. Um, uh, the Union Jack guy, I forgot Claudio. Oh, okay. He's the other guy from uh, Urban Shakedown. From Urban Shakedown, who right. went on to mo a more trancey sort of yeah club style music. Because there's that big Bowie as well. That uh, is it, Aphrodite. I think that was Aphrodite as well. The big bowl, yeah, because he was they were Amiga heads. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to use Amiga. Yeah, yeah. Before Pete Cannon, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, you know because I mean? everyone sort of thinks, and I love Pete. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, for but, sure. But everyone right now is sort of like, oh, Amiga's amazing. It's I Pete mean, Cannon. it's like, mate, have you not heard of Busy B or yeah. Aphrodite or you know what I mean? Yeah, guys. Exactly. So where did you? So you got Diesel Boy, the guy. That, sorry, Diesel Boy. Apologies. AK twelve hundred. Because I was going to ask you about Diesel Boy next. Um, how did, did you ever work with him directly? Because I, I mean, I remember seeing you on a few flyers and lineups. With Aphrodite? No, with Diesel oh, Boy. With oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So jumping to Diesel Boy. We, we <laughs> started a. Um, we were. How did you become friends? How did that all. Okay, well, we were each other's biggest competition. Right, yeah. Um, no promoters in America. Drum and bass or jungle. It, this was before drum and bass. Jungle music back then. Um, or dark side or yeah. whatever it was at that time tech step yeah was um, it wasn't quite big enough for a, a bigger promoter to hire more than one out-of-town DJ yeah so he and I would basically never be on the same gig yeah. until we um, until we started releasing on moonshine right okay now moonshine was the one label in America that really, really supported every avenue of rave music. Right. From, um, sorry, sorry. Uh, Moonshine was the one label that, that supported every angle in rave music, in yeah. rave culture. Yeah. And every single month for Herb Magazine, which was a big, big music magazine. Yeah, I remember Herb For magazine, music yeah. culture from yeah. LA, Raymond yeah. Roker, big up. Yeah, Raymond yeah, 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 I remember Herb um, Magazine. Herb Magazine, the back cover was always reserved for Moonshine. Right, and okay. That was where you know my my mix CD covers were on. Yeah. My you know, um, Diesel Boy got got hot, uh, got a, a mix CD deal. Yeah. Um, and so back then, this was I think my first CD from them came out in '97. Right. So at about that point, from see, I had I had already been playing internationally from well, my first international gig was at the end of. 93 right. um, at a, a, a small Hollywoods in Romford. Right, okay. Um, in, in the UK? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. and, uh, and that was December 93. Um, so from then on, like I was traveling, I, I think my, 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 first, my first big gig that I was really paid was a New Year's Eve 91, 92 uh, in LA. And yeah. then I was flying to DC and to, you know uh, New York um, Denver these were just certain markets yeah and so through that popularity of the rave scene I got this offer to do these mix CDs I started using my connections to get upfront tunes yeah. and started and also tried to incorporate some American made tunes at the same time Oof. and put those out and got wildly popular because of the promotional angles that Moonshine utilized. Moonshine signed me, Dara, and Damien, decently. Right. And one night we were at a Moonshine Over America tour stop. I think it was in New Orleans. And uh, and we were all on stage and we were just sort of saying to each other, you know, we're never, this is the first time, the only time we're ever going to be playing the same show is if it's through Moonshine or if we did something ourselves. So we actually, um, it's a funny story because Damien liked the name Planet of the Drums. Yeah. And he hit up Raymond Roker, who did an article in um, Earth Magazine about drum and bass jungle called Planet of the Drums. Right. And so he hit him up. 
and asked for permission to use that name. Yeah, yeah. Um, and always back then we used respect and, yeah. and, and consideration. It yeah. was we followed the the chain of command. Yeah, and the yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and and we've always done everything legit. You know, like it, it and so. We decided to say, okay, well, if the three of us banded together, this music, because we each have a great fan base, we're, we're selling, we're topping, you know, the, back then you could do sound scan, and like, and, you know, when you're, when you're in the top 20 every week for, for uh, electronic music sales, then you start to develop a, an idea that maybe, maybe there's something to this. So the three of us are like, for the music, for the sake of the music, and the sake of getting us out of this back room, mm. why don't we band together? We'll do our own tour. We'll mm. be the everything, the headliners, and the, and we'll demand main stage, yeah. proper sound system, <laughs> like literally. And yeah. it was, and that was our mission statement: come correct or not at all. Like, yeah. like don't even make the offer if if it's not going to be a main room. And, and, so, and so it's through Moonshine you got to know Dara and. and yeah. uh, uh, Diesel Boy, yeah, and that's how that Planet of Drums relationship. Well, sort of. I would. That's how we became Planet connected right. um, uh, professionally. Yeah, but we knew each other. We were aware of each other. Like Dara used to come over and play in Gainesville a lot. And, yeah, and he would, he would, he would come over and, and we'd see him in Gainesville and stuff. I think we, I think we left him one night in Gainesville, which is you know like a three-hour drive from right. there. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, those were the days. So it's like, you know, I think I was mashed up. On yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the days, mate. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, again, everything that we've done has led us to right here. Um, but, yeah, we were aware of one another and we were friendly, but we hadn't been sort of familiar. And I think we decided early on that the only way that we could actually make a difference and leave a lasting impression on this music. Yeah. Because back then... Even back then, we didn't think that it was going to go as far as it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, and now all of a sudden, you know, however many years later, <laughs> um, you have people <laughs> like like. Um, there's a bunch of DJ collectives now. You yeah. Know, especially in, in England. You yeah. Know, um, King of the Rollers. King of the Rollers. Like yeah, yeah. And like Fabio's the one that brought that to my attention. He's like, you know, you guys were the ones to do it first. You know. Yeah. And and. Uh, these these guys sort of they won't say that they you know they, you won't get that sort of nod but people who know know yeah I mean yeah. I, I, it's, it's, funny, it's, funny, it's funny you mentioned King of the Rollers that was actually an invention by one of the board members of the hospital yeah yeah um, and you know but that board member will be fully aware of who who that is and the idea of like a super group you know of, of, of artists coming together right and he'd, he'd, he'd actually um, tried to do it with women and different other sort of, you know, groups, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah, and, and, sure. and a few said no, you know, yeah. some didn't come to fruition. I think King of the Rollers was the right one that worked. Yeah. But I think it was more about them as producers as well. Dude, I mean, thing. you can't deny the talent that each of them have. Oh. And, and, and yeah. uh, it is a great, it, it's a vibe because they get on and, you know. Yeah, I've mean? got so, respect for the three of them, yeah. very much so individually. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I do, do sort of like. But did that never come to fruition? Because you never did. Did you, did you make tunes as Planet of Drums? No, no, we yeah. never, we never. See, we have a lot of creative differences. Yes. Um, which <laughs> has, has, has probably prevented us from going further than we already managed to go, to go you know. But um, I and I think if we were to have made tunes, it would have probably taken us Cemented to that next things, level yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but i i just we all have different styles and i think between the three of us dara is sort of the more passive yeah. whereas damien and i are both very like like i'm business minded and yeah. he's design focused right um and he's like a perfectionist where i'm more of a sort of I'm a one pot guy. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, he's a he's a he's a five course meal kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the best way I can I can fairly explain it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why. So, so so that happened. So you did you ever try? Did you ever sit in the studio? Did you ever try and not have? I mean, we. That's another thing because we live so far apart. Got um, you know, at at at, at a time. Uh, 
Damien was in Philly, Dara in New York, in New York and yeah. uh, and I here in Florida. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, to, to get all three of us to have the same schedule yeah. and to sit in, especially for something, you know, again, our, our you know, we, we could have taken advantage of the online sharing of, of stuff. And we did that with, with uh, mixed projects. But when it came to writing a tune, I think... Um, I think Damien's been so focused on all these other elements of what he does in life, especially design and cooking and the aesthetics of being a DJ, yeah. that he didn't um, spend as much time learning the 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 technical aspect of being Go in the studio. Yeah. Go yeah. For Dara, much of the same thing. He he can sit in with somebody and they can write a tune yeah and he'll get in and he'll 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 do the edits and he'll do everything and and they both do that but to actually sit from start to finish and make a tune on your own yeah like i'm pretty much the only one that that was able to sort of that was doing that yeah yeah because yeah. everyone's different i mean and like many people at home at home <laughs> many people yeah and the audience would be would be amazed to understand and learn how many of the producers that you hear in jungle even till now in drum bass that aren't the guy, you know, that that's made the tune, right, like, right. you know, or, or at least they would be in the room, but it'd be someone else essentially pressing the buttons and running whatever door. And to door. be fair, sometimes it's just about familiarity, where yeah. somebody can say, okay, I want to use this break. Uh, here's my folder of samples. I want you to load them up and get them time right, yeah. and and do this stuff. And no, I want the bass to go bump, bump, bump. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And, mm. and you and 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 they orchestrate it but yeah. they don't actually engineer it yeah and, and um that that was probably one of the most common ways for people to write music all the way through the entire history of drum and bass and it, it, it was it was it was common for some i think there's you know there's different codes so to speak right you know if you talk to like the busy bees and yeah, those guys. Those are the, they, those are they the, were studio rats. Yeah, they were the, they yeah. Were the Jedi's. For so sure. like they were guys that were in the studio and knew yeah. how to use their shit. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people that I came up with and knew were like that. And it was only once you, once I got out into the wider world of jungle, yeah, you started discovering. Oh, so and so doesn't make his own tunes. It's like you know what I mean. It's not like oh, okay, that's a bit disappointing. I really like it. Yeah. You know, and, and it was, and, and I think it ruined as time went on and technology got easier and easier people to learn to make music I, I just felt less and less sympathy for people that were saying oh I can't make it. right Do you know because right I said, well, well, even by now you haven't learned I had to put more of my time and effort into learning how to make music yeah. early on so I could adapt yeah easier later on yeah. you know what I mean and I didn't know that at the time yeah. so I'm glad I did that and to have people mentor me like Rob Playford or Dom or yeah. Danny Brakes and learn you know Danny Bray is one of my heroes, Good by luck. the way. Oh my God, Dan, he's, he's, he's one of my heroes. One of my all-time best friends. Yeah, like, literally oh, wow. <laughs> lifelong best friends. Like I can call him right now out of anywhere, and I guarantee you, he'll, he'll be he'll answer. We'll me. tell him to get in touch with me, please. <laughs> I um, will too. Yeah, yeah, you please hear that, do. Bro? Yeah, yeah, please, mate. Come on. <laughs> he is one of my all-time top top producers in jungle drum and bass, and because. He clearly is, like me, a massive fan of hip hop yeah. and a massive fan of jungle. Yeah. And like, you know, in a lot of the music that I, you know, I love that jazz infused music because of hip hop, yeah. right? you know, and, and because of my love of hip hop and Public Enemy and all the stuff that I was yeah. growing up and listening to. And it's clear that Danny Brakes was a similar type. Yeah. And he sort of was, and, and you know, he's an NPC guy as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I still to this day plays tunes. Yeah. Um, I'm such a fanboy. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, so how was that? You know, so that's from just you calling up, dropping science, or yeah. Well, actually, he was working at Boogie Times. Oh right, yeah. So yeah. Um, that's when I first got in with Suburban Bass. Um, yeah. You know, I would stay at, at, at Danny's place, and and this was when Danny lived with his parents. Yeah. You know what I mean? And was and it Braintree? Was it in Essex? No, it oh. was uh, South End on. Street. Oh, South End of Sea, of course. Yeah. 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 So uh, staying over there and, and and just getting familiar with him and. and <laughs> well, we you to meet South End. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> we we had the, these guys flying over in '92, '93. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it, it it was really cool, but. Uh, Early on, Danny got a, a sort of a, a thing about flying, where he's yeah. like, I'm never going to get on an airplane again. And that was that. He 
hasn't since got on a plane. He'll get on a boat, yeah, a ship, but uh, a, or a train. But yeah, he will not get on a plane. He won't. He won't fly. No. no. So he's like Murdoch. No, yeah. not Murdoch. Uh, B.A. Bright is like B.A. Yeah. The 18. He right. will <laughs> not go on a plane. Oh. But, so, um, you know, but, which is. It, it's it's unfortunate because it probably um, that, yeah. it probably sort of stunted his ability to yeah. really really blossom as an artist because he could have but now we're in the age to where all he's got to do is send a file of beats to somebody like Timberland or something like that and they'd be all over it you know like it, he's amazing he is a true analog warrior <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not abandoning the no uh, worries. And we'll just take this time to <laughs> support the Swirlery Wine yes, Bar. Swirlery. Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Orlando, Florida. Enjoy the Swirlery. Oui. Uh, I've got a nice rosé here because I'm feeling a bit rosé -y. So, yeah, cheers. Yeah. Um, so, Suburban Base, so what would it have been? This would have been what, 90? Well, 92 they were coming over. Wow. So, yeah. I again, I have my record store in 91. So, yeah. I established these relationships in 91 yeah i started coming in 92 um they started coming in 92 yeah. over here yeah um and we just became really really good friends at i think in uh you know and again through licensing through moonshine and stuff like that i would get these tunes from from danny and 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 stuff that just was you know super exclusive yeah and um uh, and uh you know, use of weapons stuff and, and just, you know, um, it was just a really, really good way to be brought up yeah. because I feel like I was disciplined and I learned the right way for what this culture was. And for me, I can, okay, see, when I, when I first started DJing, um, while I got into it through, uh, the early acid house and club scene and, mm. and pre-rave scene. Um, I first started gigging as a hip hop scratch DJ for these two guys called Blind Alley. Yeah. And um, it was Mario and CJ. And Mario uh, died since from you know whatever. But um, it, it was it was I would just play these like beats and breaks records yeah. and just sort of while they would flow and I would just just cut beats and yeah. that early on gave me that that sort of this was 1989 so yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. it gives you that you know that that you're already primed for for hardcore break beat right, and yeah. jungle techno yeah, yeah. And, you know because you're you're doubling up on on beats and you're you're already using loops and, and digging for samples and yeah. learning about rare groove and funk and, and yeah. being from Florida we had the whole you know the the you know and, and my mom I, I have to like like my mom was a teacher um, my hero like like she um, was very she worked at an inner city school here in right. Orlando and she was a physical education teacher yeah so she literally like like and she also taught life skills so she was developing these young talented minds and um, she was very music um, friendly and mm. like the scope of music would be from Cat Stevens to Earl Klug to the Ohio Players to you know Bob Dylan to, to you know just early sign the family stone and so that's what I was coming up on yeah and um, to have that discipline and to know hip hop and to know funk and to know jazz mm. and then to hear this stuff all of a sudden I'm, I'm in the record store buying records and all of a sudden here's something that sounds nothing like a club record that yeah. you could play in a club yeah. here's something completely different I was like okay so this is me everybody <laughs> and I even have I, somewhere I have it's, it's, it, it's a business card it says hottie shop Dave Minner <laughs> owner breakbeat connoisseur or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that like, <laughs> like you know this is 1991 dude mm. like like this is over 30 years That's ago a long time ago and man. and and i'm like so coming to england and seeing it really grow from yeah. the beginning mm. to where people people weren't you know this was never a money thing like yeah. like this was never a money thing yeah. it only just got to a money thing after 
the world saw EDM. Like even at the highest point, you could see Andy C would sit in a room in a green room, and everybody around him, Paul Van Dyke, Carl Cox, Paul Oakenfold, he was the lowest paid person in the room. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Well, no, it's probably not. It's- you know? No, he's probably still getting underpaid. Compared to those guys, he's probably still... Underpaid compared to those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. this wasn't anything that he started out with the intention of going, you know what, I'm going to have a couple of properties and I'm going to be able to vacation whenever I want. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to be a workaholic, but I'm... Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's, it, you know, when you, when you see some, some people like that who, who actually stayed the course and made it and and very you know, much so you know and and there's a lot of people there's a lot of people coming in that you know like like one of the biggest influences i had in the jungle scene itself was the the person who used to send me the like mikey from d underground right okay. he used to send me just tunes from the store just yeah like their own bits all the all the like paula visa stuff like yeah everything yeah. like like every like, just when you have access to the, those music those people that make that music like there's a tune and i don't know if you would, i don't know if many people would know this tune but it was and i don't know who it was but it was eoad and the name of the tune is called move me right and that tune's got the baddest percussion in it and it was a jungle tune and it just like E O A D E O A D okay. move me and right. like a lot of people don't know that tune but that tune is an early early tune that that really really kicked it off for me for what I understood jungle to become yeah yeah I'll say that for sure I would, I, I, do, do you know anything about them did you ever find out anything no. about them no no, no. no, no. I, well I know I know it was it was all related with Mikey and Paul and like all these, right, these right, crew, right, right. you know, um, that that whole label. I'm trying to think of the I be for records. Yeah, like, yeah. Paul Paul was definitely one of the uh, original sort of sort of like yeah, sort of like front runners in terms of people putting out music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Him being Paul I be for yeah. him being a name, a character, just a steady force, a presence yeah. Yeah. in jungle awareness and yeah. and you know again like when I when I started in like 94 when I started going to AWOL and Wax Club and yeah. things like that <laughs> you know, that's so where Jungle yeah. really took hold because <laughs> I'm a white guy from America yeah. coming into a black club yeah. for, for for urban music that that this is no nonsense. Like, yeah. You don't go in there and take the piss. You don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. So you can tell you've been around enough Brits to so yeah. take the piss. Yeah. Mass, Mass and Brixton. Like. So, yeah. Like you know what I mean? Again, yeah. another place that you just yeah. you gotta like you know coming up early on. I learned the code of conduct and the chain of command. Yeah. And, you know, being at Music House. Yeah. I was. Yeah, I was oh you. my god! I, yeah, I right. used to. I used to sit at Music House. In the morning, and then as soon as Drew Ryder and Patty are back in, <laughs> I just go, my, I'd go, yeah, man, man come on, man. Man. I told exactly a very similar story on the previous podcast. Yeah. Maybe three or four times. I'd get there at 11 o'clock before it opened. Yeah. Wait so around all day, really happy, really chuffed, and then it would get to like six or seven in the evening, and Ryder would show up, and then that was it. It was yeah. over. And you hear everyone groan. Yeah. And everyone go, ooh, right? <laughs> and then, because you knew then, basically, yeah. No one else is getting a dub's cut. But you know, I had people leaving, like hype leaving me the the um, the the Spanish version of "Rinse Out the Town" or "Run Out the Town." It was called. right, okay. But they redid it, "Rinse Out the Sound." Oh, uh, okay. With Fox, I think. Yeah. Um, but this was an, like a, so he he cut that plate for me and left it, and and he 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 he's like, "Yo, you better pick that fucking plate up, man." I. I had it cut for you. Yeah. So fortunately, one of the times I got to go in there, there was already Something stuff cut. there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I well, got it's all right for some. Yeah. Yeah. I never, got, <laughs> I never got that luxury, but I wasn't really known at all at that time. So. Yeah. But I was again. I, made, it was a double-edged sword because on on one hand, um, I did have that going for me that I wasn't there to 
to compete with them. No. So I was going back to my territory. Exactly, yeah. And so they would give me bits, you yeah. know what I mean? And plus it would be promotion for them, you know? Mm. This is a good way to... Yeah, get your stuff over in the yeah, 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 you know? Um, but it, there must have been an element of that because obviously with you being one of the only people over here representing Jungle at the time, yeah. you know, a few of the British guys, you know, must have been hitting you up I was getting... I was... See, that's the thing. My tune selection and collection yeah. was just unheard of nobody else had tunes that i had and yeah, i would get yeah. booked solely on the music i was playing yeah like no lie and 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 if you ask him he would tell you that that damien diesel boy yeah would look at my reviews to figure out what records to get like i was i was hooked up with crystal and so i'd get these tunes from uh, warp drive i got yeah. a tp of and like early yeah wow, okay yeah <laughs> and uh and you know just knowing him and getting hooked up and and all that stuff everybody at lucky spin and, and yeah you know all all that section five and yeah. just you know Sour records, yeah, as well, yeah, yeah, right. oh yeah, everything, yeah, <laughs> you know, you everything. Love it. Just getting, you know, basement, mm -hmm. it, you know. Um, again, with main source yeah. was was what was good because that was because they were distributed here, right? No, no, they were back in the UK. No, it, yeah, was, it was Vickis, and it was um, it was. God, it was funny as Because I dealt with yeah. basement mostly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil Wells. Yeah, yeah. Phil and. Yeah. and uh, who was, else was that basement? Was it Chris and Toby? Uh, so it was Chris. Chris Parkinson. Chris right? Parkinson. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He went on to do. He went on to go and start um, yeah. New Urban. But Vickis was the guy at, at Main Source. Vickis and and I think Trenton also. Okay. Uh, ran. He he was the the money. I'd heard of him, but I never dealt with Main Source. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was you know back then it was it was that was. They handled a lot of the good labels, and you know, especially like Creative Wax and stuff yes. like that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the, you know, up in '95, '96, '97, yeah. when um, when the sound started to yeah, get a bit started. more. Yeah. See, and what's funny is this is when, in America, for me, I was already feeling like I was getting kind of old by then. Yeah. So, as that new dark step tech step sound uh neurofunk early whatever it was going to be called yeah started being put out people like dara and damien started gravitating toward yeah those tunes and i started playing more like jazzy drum funk kind of you know, I know. Um, yeah so i i started playing that and, yeah and that gave me i always wanted to just go beyond what was already expected yeah. and that's kind of if we fast forwarded to now some of the problems i have as a an elder statesman we'll say <laughs> um is i don't relate to a lot of the more popular music of yeah. today yeah and it's hard for me with my position as it was to play the tunes that I really resonate with on a personal level. And I decided, you know, I came to a crossroads basically where I, I said, you know, I, I just, I, my passion isn't being on stage and DJ. My passion is sharing this music. Right. So I've always been sort of in the background and a lot of people won't. Who am I kidding? Like no, it's not like I'm a big deal. Like so, I keep I keep going. A lot of people won't admit this, but but like like I do more for people behind the scenes than I do yeah. on the surface. Yeah, 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 and and I try to um, help people when I can, and if I can link people, and that's become sort of my specialty. Even not with drum and bass, like just musically. Like I hook. There's this guy called Uberzone. Right. And. I hooked him up with Africa Bombada. Next thing you know, they do a collaboration that gets, that sells, you know, hundreds of thousands of units. Cool. So, and both of them will tell you that I'm the guy that linked them up. Go you ahead. know what I mean? So, like, for me to be able to do that, it's something that I can sort of see remotely. I could, I could look at everybody there and go, you know what, this guy and this person would complement one another so well. Let's. You know, let's try to get them to know each other. Like Mark Archer from yeah. Alternate. Alternate, yeah. Um, yeah, I've spoken to him many times. Yeah. I hooked him up with David Noller from Dynamics 2. Right. And 
both of them were mutual fans of one another. Right, because, right, right. You know, and they're like, oh my god, and and I believe <coughs> um, I've got uh, through that. I think Nikki Archer has taken them on, maybe or might be taking them on for Amazing. a few gigs because she does uh, the agency. You know what I mean? Oh, um, all the rave agencies. Yes, yeah, I spoke yeah. to her recently. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah, she's got like Asen. She's got Asen and, and uh, yeah, yeah she's got everybody. Oh, like, the old guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nikki yeah, Archer, yeah. Shout out Nikki. Yeah, oh, yeah. wow. To, I might have to reach out to her then because I think she. Wait, wait, so do. You, are you on her agency as well? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I'm not. We're just, we're just. No, just saw her name. We're just like, like friends on a personal level. That if I can do something for anybody, yeah. Same with, just same with anybody. Same with um, like urban, uh, urban. Uh, yeah, but the agency, urban agency. Urban agency. Right, like okay. I, I used to work with them a bit. I used to work with Tanya. Um, like just, just yeah, being, yeah. yeah, you know, um, just I think knowing people and 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 you know, yeah, yeah. If somebody hits me up and they go, hey, do you know so and so? Yeah, I'll gladly put them together. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, if I can help continue to progress the scene that way, then yeah. Why wouldn't I? So, so you sort of become more of a fixer now. You sort of like, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's 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 simple because for me, and and I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with this. Um, I'm constantly um, aware of people's perception of me, and that gives me anxiety to a degree. <laughs> What's, well, what do you think that perception is? Well, I, I don't. I, I just mean that, like, you're you're sort of to a degree you're put on a pedestal, yeah. and and if if you fail somebody, then you never looked at the same. Right. And yeah. yeah. So, the thought of letting people down that have paid money to see me, or even whatever my attitude was at a certain time, because there's there's a time in all of our careers that we get sort of in it. Yeah. You know? yeah, <laughs> We're yeah, like, yeah. 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 Everybody's telling you this, and and you just. I made a lot of mistakes, but you know what? I've I've grown from everything that, and I've taken lesson. In all of these costly mistakes that I've made, right? And I think I think, that's what's given me that sense of obligation, to, keep, an eye on things around here to make sure. To make sure it doesn't, go off course too much. Yeah. You yeah. know, and and I've, I've I've been the vocal one many times, and like especially I've had to I've had I've been thrown under the bus. I've had to take one, take one for the team. Like, <laughs> and I'll give you an example, and and this is this is with um, my all time drum and bass idol DJ, yeah, um, Randall, yeah. Coming up because of of my the influence Mikey had on me and Cool Him Flex, yeah, Randall was. And it is every single thing of a DJ to me. Yeah. Personally, just yeah. who I would strive to be as a DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to, to have that ability to reveal music to people and expose music with no, like, like, you don't have to try to do anything because you're already there. Yeah. Like, like that was what I strived for. Yeah. And, I was doing A&R for Moving Shadow. Right. Um, I, I, I worked for them for about eight years, right after the the sort of coup that happened with Partizan. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. After, after, after the breakup between Goldie and Rob, right. um, that, that, all of the people that worked for Moving Shadow sort of tried to take things over and left and started their own label. Started called Partizan. Partizan, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Partizan, which admittedly went out and put some amazing music, though, A to be fair. Crazy good music. So like, good. Like, and the thing is, you know, and they're doing a, a new label, Overshadow, now. That, yeah, yeah. Some that good, yeah. The, the Simon and Sean and the caliber of music that they're putting out is just such quality. Very high, yeah. You know what I mean, and it's and it's back to that mindset of not having to do anything to to appease people. You just do something because you know it's good. Absolutely, and that's admirable, you know. But when that happened and they left, Rob was sort of on his own. And for me, I had a personal relationship with Rob, and I, I probably shouldn't say too much about this publicly, but it's it, it's 
pretty common knowledge that he's an introverted person right. and has a hard time expressing himself. <laughs> and now okay. through this age of, of self-expression and discovery, yeah. it's, it's easier to explain that he has that condition where you've been put on a pedestal your whole life and everybody tells you you're the best at something. You're so afraid to let people down or afraid to fail them that you put yourself last and for him to so I started doing the A&R for that right okay okay uh, all of a sudden uh, Devin Blade Runner right did a remix for um, Renegade Snares yeah right at that time I had I had already commissioned Lincoln to do a high contrast, high contrast yeah, yeah. to do a remix for Renegade Snares which came out proper yeah. and we were in the midst of licensing it to uh, Rockstar Games right okay and right then Randall was hitting up uh, Rob and said you know we want to put out this this remix of, of Devon's of Blade Runner's and Rob called me and told me, he goes, you got to shut this down immediately. Yeah. I'm not going to respond to him. I'm not going to do anything. And I had to jump on. And it was between me, Vapor, and Randall. Well, not even Randall. Just me and Mike Vapor. Yeah, yeah I know Mike. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and why Devin... Did wanna, why did Devin want to put out a remix? I don't understand why Randall wanted to put out a remix of... He was doing this um, throwback series. I forgot what it was called, but it was an EP, a series of EPs um, that had old throwback uh, remixes yeah. that his label was doing. Randall, whatever. Oh, Mac Two. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, That's weird. Because when it's come out on hard on uh, Moving Shadow, so why would you want to put a remix out of another label label's tune? This mean? was this was right around the time. This was maybe two thousand six seven eight or nine i don't, I don't know somewhere yeah. around there yeah. um and it was it was uh just what people started doing now yeah. it's sort of commonplace to just do your own version hey mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but what i said i, I had to get on like dnb arena or whatever and and say you know you can't do this and 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 they were like well who are you to say that yeah and i'm like well, I am moving shadowing as yeah. long as you're as far as you're concerned. You know what I mean? Like, like that. Like, I, you know, I was the A &R guy. And yeah. I was told specifically to handle that. Yeah. Next thing I know is is fucking Randall's just. I'm on that list of of do not fucking go near him. Because, oh wow. You know it's gonna get ugly and, yeah. and like I, that's this is my fucking hero. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh my god. So. Yeah. I've had to deal with that through my career, and, and fortunately, it's it's the dust has settled on all these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But having to be vocal is what I was getting at. Sometimes I had to be the most vocal person in the room yeah. to, to <laughs> stand to be that voice for what was technically the right thing to do. Yeah, with the code of conduct and the yeah. chain of command. Yeah, I think it's weird to put out a tune. I mean, I had that problem with Mike Paradinis with the acid rain thing. He put out on 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 uh, his label a remix of a tune that came out on In Perspective. Yeah. It's like, what are we doing that for? Do you know what I mean? And it's obviously what he wants to do, and you know, it, I'm not in a position to sort of sort of like you know take people to court and you know what I mean, like you know yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So it's fine. He just gets to do that as like you know more. Well, let's face it, more entitled, privileged <laughs> white dude. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, no. I'm being really honest. Of like. You know, he's like, yeah. how, how is a small black run, you know, yeah. experimental Independent label, label going to really compete with that? Going to you know? come in and test this. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's, um, it's going to cost more than it's worth to yeah. resolve. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like, people say, well, you know, shouldn't you be speaking to the artist? And that, yeah, maybe, again, but, there's the respect yeah. that a lot of people, for me, I came up with that in 1992, 93, yeah. by watching people get beat up and by being at London Carnival and seeing that sort of you don't fuck around like this is not our music <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like this, this I, I've never misconstrued that and I've never taken that liberty with yeah. anybody or any label or anything yeah. where where I feel that I've been more important yeah, or more significant than any any thing yeah no, no, I, think, <laughs> I think there's some of the top labels that are very glad those days are gone 
Yeah. Because it means they could just take basically steal. Yeah, from yeah. The old. It's, it's it's just taking liberties yeah. with things that and who knows maybe now in this sort of modern society that's what's gonna ultimately be in the history books where oh yeah this tune it, it caused all these people to dig for the original yeah. source you know yeah. just like sample sources yeah um and maybe we are creating the future version of sample sourcing mm. you know mm. um it's it's getting more and more difficult to mm. be unique and individualized than it has ever has been and that was the thing. samples yeah but i think a lot of people now have, are, are finding other ways of you know writing rewriting yeah. stuff that they yeah. that they interpret yeah yeah and there's a lot of like trained there's a few producers a lot of producers i know you know trained and you know got to take piano lessons and you know what i mean yeah, it's just something to get more musicality themselves just using sound palettes rather than samples i guess when we were coming out we were always looking for samples and nowadays, you know, people are writing stuff from scratch more, and yeah. I mean, one artist, and, or they're writing what notes they want, and have an AI do it. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Yeah, oh, God, there's that. I just, I'm, yeah, I'm trying not to um, yeah. delve on the AI thing. Um, can, but um, so, is there anything for the future for you now? Because obviously, you've, you've come through, you've done the whole movie shadow thing. You know, you've had a success as a DJ, you know, you've run a record shop, um, you've made the tunes. So what else is there? Is there still things yeah, you're trying to achieve? For me, in with regard to music, I think it's best in the background. Right. Um, I, I think that I always had a problem promoting AK-1200. There's yeah. always so much AK-1200 to go around. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I would much rather promote a newer artist or a newer mindset yeah. or a newer sort of theme than or 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 you know uh, conglomerate or you know whatever that that will enable this scene to progress yeah. and to continue moving forward i would really like to see somebody else do what we did with playing to the drums right okay i would i would like to see And what it's going to take, it's going to take these event promoters and producers to realize that drum and bass is worthy of its own stage again. Absolutely. And then in, in once America. they do that, in yeah. America, yeah. 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 And once they do that, they'll, they'll, we'll start to see new stars emerge. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not stars, but new persons of interest. Yeah. And those people can go on to be really, really well received and influential for the next generations to come you yeah. know what i mean and i think as long as they follow the same basic structure of if it wasn't broke don't fix it the thing the one thing about jungle and drum and bass that has has stayed the course is we never cared about what the main room was doing yeah we always focused on what we were doing our influences came from the West Indies and came from hip hop and yeah. came from funk, Joel, soul, jazz, you know, rock and roll, whatever. Yeah. It didn't come from house and disco and it, well, it could have came from disco yeah, if you have that influence, yeah, yeah. but it didn't come from recycled 2000 and later music. Yeah. It came from early redevelopment and there's still, there's so many things. If you look at the history of music, rock and roll itself the the uk the british explosion yeah that was all from mississippi delta blues absolutely yeah you know people like led zeppelin those songs are straight covers yeah. of of blues tunes yeah. yeah that that you know the working man did yeah and never got credit for no and uh Pim, never got paid i mean for. paul mccartney stones at least they would say the who Led yeah Zeppelin. they would always yeah they, but they would i mean at least paul mccartney would admit that yeah we were just trying to copy the black guys from right, right. from america and stuff and the, and the stones much the same you know well jeff beck and 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 and, and Keith Richards and Ronnie Wood and yeah. like they had their and Eric Clapton they yeah. all had that little blues club yeah, yeah, yeah. that they were like really really dialed into yeah. and it was trying to one up each other back then the competition to to out blues the other <laughs> you know you gotta like that must have been a mad time yeah, you know what yeah, I mean yeah, it must and, have been crazy 
I mean, that story about seeing they all saw um, uh, Jimi Hendrix, isn't it? And, yeah, like, exactly. Eric Clapton apparently stormed off and <laughs> almost quit that night. You know yeah, what I mean? And yeah. like, it was like, oh, it's over. Because look at this guy. He's just... And that guy didn't have... He didn't have any confidence at all going yeah. into it until he got to England. Yeah. Like in Amer- he got shunned in America yeah. and sent to England in order to get any kind of respect over here. Yeah. And when you think about that, a lot of people from England had to come to America to break to it in America to get yeah. respect back there. Yeah. And when you think about that as a as as not just from a music sense but from a musician sense. Yeah the weight of that world on your shoulders is is a lot to endure yeah and to have to keep up with with that level of expectation yeah your whole career and man these people lasted multiple decades yeah. in in this you know the same thing with with jungle drum and bass we've lasted multiple decades in this yeah. there's a lot of similarities between the British explosion yeah and and I'm not I mean I'm going no, 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 okay, uh, yeah, but there oh, are yeah. there are similarities between that sort of DIY mentality yeah you know mm. punk rock everything it yeah. was it was you had to you had to prove yourself every single step of the way absolutely and that's yeah. what's so important for the, the, the guys now the producers now because they need to know that like it wasn't yeah. really it wasn't as easy as it wasn't it? as yeah well I don't think it's easy now but I think people think it is I think what it is that it would seem like someone there was no blueprint no there wasn't no, <laughs> I don't think there ever really it is what what the only blueprint I would say is, is that if 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 there is enough power and money behind you there's a there's a reasonable chance of success yeah that's the only blueprint you know money begets money a little bit right you know it's no it's no coincidence that you know, you could take a certain section of some of the top producers in drum and bass, and you start to see they're all from middle class backgrounds, yeah, and they're all, yeah. you know what I mean? It's when, all, when you get a manager, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've got management. Yeah. They're all kind of from middle class backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. They're all from, you know, none of them are really from London. No, no. you know what I mean? All this sort of stuff, and and, yeah. and so you know, and you know, there's no hate for that, but you start to see there's a model, and you know, yeah. I, I mean, the fact that I think it's is it DJ Mag or Mix Mag? I can't remember who's just done a feature on the last. <laughs> surviving representatives of the working classes in dance music wow. they had to sort of do a feature on that because yeah. the model now in electronic music is very much you know you've got to come from money yeah and that's really the only way you can have a success in electronic music because exactly. otherwise you've got to work for a living or you've got to do whatever else and yeah. you're not ever going to make it like Dillinger's probably one of the last sort of like working class yeah heroes who made it that I can think such of such a legend really. yeah like they um, just written some of the most important That guy should be on the Mount Rushmore yeah, of, yeah. Of, 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 of this whole thing yeah, that yeah. we've been a part of. Yeah. Like him and, and Rupert even. like you Fotech, know. definitely. Who, so, all right, okay. So that's, that's a good question. Who would be your Mount Rushmore? So you've got Fotech, Dillinger. I would say Fotech, Dillinger, Randall. Just because of his inspiration or his influence yes. on yeah. the music. I, I like... Like you, you cannot dispute his place. Yeah. And then see, like, just to limit it to four. Yeah. I would, I would have to say. I'm trying not to say Danny, but I, I, I yeah, you can put Danny brains up there. I, I would. <laughs> you know. The thing um, is, I don't think enough people. I don't think enough certain, people. Right. No, so, it's so really annoying. When it when it comes to when it comes to the image of it. Yeah. Like. Again, different eras, but all-time consistency for who's been going strong since 1992, 93, yeah. all the way through. I mean, not for nothing, and and maybe people wouldn't understand this, but there there is on Mount Rushmore. There's that one unknown person. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would have to say Leroy, man. SS. SS. You know what? That is a really, really good shout. He is one of the hardest working, most committed loyalists to this whole culture yeah. and to the goodness of artistry that we've been lucky enough to witness in this culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent. And and I can't leave him out of yeah. of 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 that to let that go on. Yeah, DJ SS is. 
I mean, he basically took over the scene for like a year and a half yeah. at one point, didn't he? He put he just, so many people he on. He shut everything down. To, he, he bridged the entire planet yeah. with... <laughs> with um, sorry. That, okay, sorry. Go sorry. Cool. on. <laughs> yeah. He, he bridged the entire scene, the entire world, yeah. you know, the world of drum and bass. Yeah. He was going out there, doing the legwork, Put, doing shows for next to nothing like yeah. he really this this isn't a money thing for him it never has been yeah and you know it, and again when he was with Tanya and stuff like that yeah like like they were it, it's just everything he woke up to to jungle and he goes to sleep to jungle like like that I can't I can't I can't even like take his place and give it to anybody else yeah, on, on yeah. that on yeah. that on that, this fictional mountain with jungle yeah, producers yeah. carved into it yeah exactly <laughs> exactly now you know it's and it's not and it's because of the bigger picture yeah you know what I mean and and you know there's there's great DJs and um, again like Randall you know Randall Fabio like yeah. Like you know, there's there's Swift. There's people that are yeah, Swift doesn't get mentioned really. No, no, get Swift, talked about enough. Yeah, Swift doesn't get the love he deserves. No. Digital doesn't get the love he deserves. I've been saying this for quite some time that digital doesn't get enough of the respect and yeah, love that he there's deserves. There's so many of these people, and and like, like Steve and I written. have a great relationship. Like I was, I was, he was hook. He was one of the ones hooking me up with with tunes. Yeah. I mean, I pay for him but yeah. but um, for my mix CDs yeah. but um, he would give me stuff that people still talk about to this day the, the remix that he did for me for with Junior Reed right. um, Junior's tune it's just an amen just vibe you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. And, and that whole story like I, I was doing an album and I and and you know Junior Reed he was the guy that in in uh I mean, he did with a tune with Wu Tang Clan, but he worked with Blackie Huru, and he also was a solo artist. But he did the one thing in um, what's that song? Don't be afraid of freedom. Right, well, okay. And free to Soup Dragon. Yeah, yeah Soup Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was the little sample in that. Oh yeah. And uh, and and so we called his management and brought him to Orlando, and I had this was back, you know. Uh, 2000 maybe and uh, that's when the Kush was around yeah. and, and I brought him in the studio and I just fed him joints and, and just it was like <laughs> you're like hey what's that what's that herb you gave me a while ago and, and, it was, <laughs> and, and then he, he did the lyrics I sent you know I, I, I did the tune and put out the album but then the only person I wanted for that job to yeah. do the remix was digital yeah it's all right Go on. Um, no, 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 do it, do it, do it. It's fine. We're, like I said, we're in Shirley's yeah, here in Orlando. Right. No, go ahead, go ahead. So, this is our... Oh, you want to do the wine? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Right, yeah, cool. Because they're selling wine here, so this, yeah. we are talking jungle, but they do sell wine. Jungle and wine. Jungle and wine. Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Esto? Esto, hook it up, dog. <laughs> Can, can you get yeah, us off? I, I already put it. You guys are good now. Another beer and a wine, man. Yeah? Where's uh, We're going to say this. This is all staying in. All right. Yeah. We'll get <laughs> no, this is fine. This is real. Huh? Yeah. I had a rose. Yeah, can I get, can you get another one? And I had that champagne velvet or whatever it was yeah. called. Yeah, cool. Uh, this is lovely. I haven't done one in a bar before. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, another first for me. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. So, talk. I mean, do you, do you know those guys well? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, again, these guys come from the most sincere place. Yeah. Like, like, it was always love for drum bass and, and um, what they started a little DIY thing and, yeah. and built it up yeah. and then reached out to me hey will you play our show and yeah. back then and, and it packed you yeah. know what I mean like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, and they've gone through no less than 20 venues over yeah. the years you yeah, know what I mean? yeah. no less um, but they've always consistently been there and, and you know you, 
these guys don't make money. They have no. their day jobs, and, and yeah. you know what I mean. And, and um, passion is, is all. But because Orlando has had something for so long, it's provided our fans of this music the the outlet to get seasoned with proper sets yeah. proper artists proper DJs proper producers yeah. proper tunes yeah. from a long time ago through every cycle yeah and they've just stayed the course man and and, and you can't 23 years like like that's the thing like like you have to give credit where it's due because that's that's perseverance that's consistency and that's just an incredible amount of patience with with the times yeah, because yeah, yeah. we don't follow the trend we hope it comes back around yeah and that's, <laughs> that's about it you know here in america that's 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 been it i mean i i worked with gridlock and i worked together for years yeah and, uh, and quite watched. In, yeah. in 2008 we put yeah. a, an album together called autopsy oh, okay and it was a double album and it was all specials and all, you know, cool stuff yeah. and a mix CD and um, like a, a thing of tunes and a mix and um, and I remember at that time going, okay, this is the year, this is the year it's gonna happen yeah. for us yeah. or next year it's gonna be next year and uh, yeah. and it just never came around and he fucked off to. At first Amsterdam, now he's in Rotterdam. Yeah, is he right there, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I'm going there after I get back. I'll give him a shout. I'll have to give him a shout. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to give him a shout. Big up, Ryan. Ryan, love you, man. (laughs) He gave me a call in all that business with uh, with, um, my former employees and... uh, yeah. yeah, we had a really, really interesting chat. It was yeah. very fascinating. We had, a lot, we had a really good chat. Actually, I didn't know he was in Rotterdam. That's cool. I have to reach out to him. That's great. That's good to know. Yeah. So you're heading there. Definitely. Cool, man. So, I mean, what's so? But we've talked about talk, but what about for you and your future? What is there? What I mean, you said you're behind the scenes. Do for me, think, is there, would that ever perform in a label, or do you think you'd ever start I, a night? Or I, I, I had my label already, and I sort of turned it over to somebody else. Yeah, I think I, I'm definitely not into starting a night. I'm just too old and too, <laughs> too tired and beat down. I think honestly, like I love making tunes. Yeah. So I've been in the studio quite a lot. I yeah. don't necessarily have a schedule that I have to abide by. Yeah. So it's more fun that way yeah. and when I go to DJ because I don't depend on being a DJ to supplement my not supplement but I don't depend on DJ to survive Yeah. Um, lately I've pivoted toward the cannabis industry because it's I, it's oh, medically weed. legal <laughs> it's nice. in Florida and on it's way to becoming recreationally um allowed yeah um and it's just it's it's the biggest uh it's the biggest industry in florida right now yeah yeah, yeah. Um, my background with the music industry gives me i just there's there's a new book um somebody from england they wrote a book about um how music brands the world like music is the best branding tool for marketing yeah and and the best example of how a company should act in order to be successful yeah follow follow a legacy musician yeah do what they do yeah (laughs) if you're a company do that yeah you know um be better than everybody else be available and be consistent yeah you know and 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 in a nutshell in any industry you're going to make it at least you're going to do all right yeah, yeah. you know follows, um, follows. aside from the the normal civil pitfalls that we have or hurdles yeah obstacles that that, yeah. that a lot of other people face here yeah. and there um, yeah. you know it's it's just you have to take opportunity when it comes yeah. and, and i think for me i realized bef- it's better to to gracefully bow out than to be 
to burn out. It's like, about yeah. You know, or for people to forget you or not even yeah, care. Yeah, I, 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 you know, so, so, and that's something that's very real because, you know, you, you, you can't help but take what your worst critic says yeah. and wonder if that might be. And, and, and again, I keep bringing this up and you wonder why, but I've had so many, like, haters the same way that like Aphrodite's had haters yeah I've had that same sort of yeah. thing with purists yeah. Yeah. even yes thank you even oh, Esther Jose thank you thank you <laughs> even Mr. Uh, Esteban Perry yeah. was a hater of mine once upon a time remember that Esteban what were you a hater of you used to be a, 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 a you used to have an opinion uh, 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 come on, I want come on, let's have it out now, come on. Come here. Uh, Hi Dave. Hi. Good to see you. 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 Good. And who are you? I'm Amy. This is Amy from Swirlery. And, she, and what am I drinking? You're drinking a Parasol Rosé La Croix. La Croix Parasol Rosé. Delish. So, Happy New Year. <laughs> celebrating 120 New years Year. of tradition with Champagne Velvet. Excellent. Hey man, and Champagne I'm Velvet. Uh, I'm Chris. Hi Chris. How you doing? You are. Good. Right. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, we're doing an interview for... We're doing an interview for my podcast called Everybody Hates Chris. And Everybody should... Hates Chris? Yes, that's the name of it. Who's Chris? I am. Oh. Yeah. But people <laughs> love you. Look at that smile. How I don't know. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, some do, but some don't. It's, we're just, it's a catchy name. Yeah, so it's just, we're just discussing the, the pitfalls of being in the public eye. and uh, As a drum and bass artist. As a drum and bass artist and being outspoken. In America. Yeah, or in the UK. Or in the UK. Yeah. Uh, so. But the, the viciousness of message boards as they grew to exist and and the, 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 the little then. club of haters that, that began. <laughs> To that of course, too. Okay, 100%. because there and this is a perspective is a we community need. of love that grew. That yes. so were you part of the jungle community? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. She's at every show. Really? And I have been for twenty four years. Yeah. 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 yeah this sure. was my family that I found. Wow. So we got yeah. die hard this American, American jungle family fam. that I found. Okay. When I found this music. I found this music when they were in the back of the club in that yeah. tiny, smelly, smoky little side room yeah. with this beat. <laughs> with this beat. Yeah. And when the people heard the beat, the people came. And wow. that's the thing. And it that's was, where I found my family. We stood out because Excellent. of our differences, yeah. not because of our similarities. Yeah. And that's... What's so wrong about that? I don't understand why that became wrong. I loved wrong. it. <laughs> You know? Brilliant. Enjoy. Thank you so Thanks. much. Cheers. I don't understand why that became wrong to be proud of. Yeah. Because I, what I loved about drum and bass is that it didn't follow the rules of, oh, it has to be this or it has to be that. Yeah. And, and it was like you could have, I mean, you know, the Ooh. scope of artists that there are. Ooh. A tune is a tune is a tune. Tune is a tune is a tune. That's it. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's the same with technicality. That's what it was with technicality and perspective. Yeah. Levels. We just felt, well, there's so much stuff you could represent. So why are you representing stuff that's already out there? Represent the underrepresented. Exactly. Why be. sound like, and again, I was quite vocal about this as EDM and dubstep started to take hold. Yeah. Why, why are we so, why are we so afraid that, that, we feel that we need to compromise our position to sound like somebody else and use influence from a more popular sound just to get attention. Yeah. Like, that's not, that's never been, that was never in my playbook. No. Like, attention? Yeah. That was the last thing on the list. <laughs> like, it was just about playing the tunes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the music. Like, yeah. And that's why we have such passionate fans. Yeah. Because. Yeah we're invested in this music in yeah. this sound in yeah. this you know she goes out and pays the money to get into the yeah. club wherever it may be the world, yeah. you know what I mean and, and it's, it's always about the fans I mean you know it's like Marie right was that, was that name? Amy oh, Amy yeah. 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 so like people like Amy you've got versions of Amy all over the world in every country yeah. that have dedicated their lives yeah. and, to and, and and dismiss any 
any kind of negativity. Yeah, exactly. That, that, exactly. Like she looked at us like we were crazy when I said anything about haters. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's like, no, it's like, a family. What are you talking about? <laughs> this, is, this is everything. Yeah. Everything's a fond memory. Yeah. You know? Mm. And that's great. That's I inspiring. Her. Yeah. I am exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I do too. Yeah. I want to go back to those days when I didn't have any negative but thoughts we've, about it. We've had to live through these sort of hardships in order to become uh, used to what we are, which yeah. that brings me to like like this thing that I literally just saw this week and, and that, that Mission Joy documentary with uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu yeah. and the Dalai Lama right. they sit together, they get together and they talk about things um, about joy, just the joy of life and you could look at things like Desmond Tutu went through beyond apartheid, apartheid he went through polio as a child, tuberculosis as a, as a teen yeah. persevered, got through that went through the whole political unrest of, of, of seeing his buddy Nelson Mandela yeah. get imprisoned for so many years and and when you see the video that they show the before and after of, yeah. of Nelson Mandela where yeah. as he's walking in to to prison or just before he gets arrested he's saying the opposition needs to be decimated wow 27 years in a prison yeah he got a perspective which is why i love your name <laughs> like <laughs> perspective is the central key to happiness yeah. it just is like yeah. it's all in your perspective and for him to gain that perspective of peace and order and compassion and empathy it is what made him who he is now yeah. or who he is to any of us now yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, know yeah. what i mean not that guy if he would have carried out that mindset before he went in yeah he wouldn't be remembered or regarded as fondly as he is now yeah nelson yeah, yeah. yeah my, my dad my dad was such a troll about nelson my dad he's well he did blow up that fact <laughs> so, yeah yeah, yeah. But that, no, exactly he was a militant he, dude, he, like my dad was always sort of like your people are sharp it's like you know, he's gonna go prison like that's what happens you go prison but it was like yeah, yeah. The point, dad. It's like, but if you blow shit up you're gonna go prison like yeah. he, was, he never understood why everyone was like oh it's so terrible because he's like you know, and I don't necessarily agree with him because I understand what that was my dad was trying to fight for. And, but I also see my dad's side because it's like, well, yeah, if you do crazy shit like that, things are going to happen There's to you. Consequences, right? There's yeah. consequences. That's what he was trying to say, you know. Right. Such, such a child. Rest in peace, dad. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm. Mm. Well, mate, this has yeah. been great. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers. Yeah, so you're good. And uh, I, think, I think we'll leave it there, shall we? We should do. <laughs> yeah, unless there's anything else. Thank you so much. Else, you want to bitch about or, or I, tell them to go no, no, I just want to say thank you for for all the opportunities I've had over the years and thanks for letting me be a part of in any remote place that whatever portion of your the background of your mind or your influence has ever had thank you for letting me be a part of that oh, because exactly. it's something that is really really important to me and it's something that I don't take for granted I, I appreciate everything that that um, that I got to do um, and to be remembered for that or regarded for that is the biggest blessing I've, I, I could ask for so I, I just I just want to you know I'm here for the music and I hope um, I hope it just lasts generations to come yeah. I, I think you will man and, and I always respect that about you because that's evident that's evident so again yeah. cheers mate nice one until so next much. time catch you again